This video is brought to you by SailRite. Visit SailRite.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. In this video, we're going to show you how to reupholster the base for this pontoon bench seat. We have separate videos that show how to do the seat, the backrest, and the side arms. If you'd like to see those videos, check out the links in the description below. This tutorial video will show you how to reupholster the base of a pontoon bench seat. Here's the old seat. We're going to redo the base in this video. The final piece of our pontoon seat reupholstery job is to redo the vinyl that's on this uh, base. Here's what that base will look like when we're done. We're going to use Eversoft vinyl fabric available from Sailrite. Though your vinyl may be in terrible shape, the base is usually made from a plastic that'll last for multiple years. Let's get started and show you how to reupholster this base. The first step, removing the old vinyl. Uh, we want to study it a little bit to see how they did it. You may want to take a few pictures of it. Looks like it's sewn here all the way down. So this is one panel, this is the second panel, and then obviously this would be the third panel. If we look at the inside here, this vinyl has been hemmed under so that it gets kind of a finished edge. More than likely they did that. It's not fancy. It could have Heidem Gimp on it. But they probably did that because the cushion pivots on this bracket. So the cushion it was like this. It's lifted up like this. So nobody's really ever going to see this. Now here where this is visible, they put Heidem Gimp on it. That can be done or we could create a single hem here like they did up here. Uh, you, uh, it's your choice. Now more than likely I'm probably going to use this as a pattern. I haven't decided for sure so I'm going to try to remove the staples and keep it intact so that I can use it for patterning my new pieces. So all we have to do the tedious job of removing staples. Uh, there's staples on the top, staples on the inside, and staples on the bottom. Now this is one complete f piece of fabric here but to allow for ventilation they uh, opened up the vinyl. We'll probably do something very similar to that. If you look at the corners, there are some screws that keep this assembly from actually touching the ground so a little bit of ventilation you can get underneath the, uh, the base as well. We have a pretty distinguished shape here, but it's not a bad idea to put a mark where panels will be uh, joined together. So we'll call this one A and A. Matchup marks are used only if you're patterning from the old vinyl. If your old vinyl's in great shape, you can use that to repattern. We're going to repattern from the base. We've decided that we're going to pattern uh, for our three pieces of fabric. Why? Well, we don't have any guesswork involved. I mean, we have some 45-degree uh, corners. We have a 90-degree turn down here. Why guess? You have to do it twice if you get it wrong. Patterning ensures that we only have to do it once. In order to uh, stick the Duraskrim pattern material to our uh, structure, we're going to put some double-sided tape on it. This will hold it in place. We took apart the old vinyl and discovered that it was in very bad shape and did not lay flat at all. So we're going to repattern. Down here we have some shape, so I'm just going to put a little double-sided tape there. This double-sided tape will hold our Duraskrim pattern material in place. This is the front edge. I'm going to put some uh, double-sided tape down here in the crevice so we can get our uh, Duraskrim to stick there. We'll peel off the transfer paper. Yeah, I have Duraskrim pattern material that's to the general size. It's oversized, so obviously we will always want it oversized. And we're going to stick it to that top edge, making sure there are no bubbles in it along its length. I'm going to start at the center and I'm going to push it down to the double sided tape working out to the left and the right. Okay this is a panel and this is a separate panel so we're only doing this panel right now so what I want to do is I want to draw a line with the material right along the edge and then I want to draw a line here my hand is not steady when I'm like drawing like this. I'm going to put where the, the edge of this thing is right now, though I'm not going to cut it. I'm going to have fabric go beyond that so that we have enough fabric to staple to the back side or the underside, I should say. And then we draw a line up here. Up here, we want uh, basically a line from corner to corner, which is right there. 
and right there. So this is our line where we will sew this panel to this adjacent panel. We'll do the same thing to the other side. Now I'm going to put this back on when we're done here, but I'm going to cut upon my lines and then we'll uh, put it back on so that we can pattern the second half. So I'm only going to peel it up to the point where I can cut. So once we have it cut, we'll put it back in the exact same position that it was before. Okay, we're going to take the double-sided tape off and pattern for the side. So the pattern material wraps around here and staples to the inside, so I don't really need to pattern for that. I just need to have excess fabric for that. Same thing down here at the bottom comes around. So really what I need to pattern for is directly on top of the adjacent panel at the 45 degree. So I'm right next to that one and then I want to come down the side. Here I want to come in following this 90 degree turn and then I want excess fabric down here so I can staple it to the underside. At the back here I want excess fabric so I can come back here and staple. So I'm just going to guess at uh, three or four inches of extra fabric here. So it's basically going to be there. And here I don't need this much fabric. I'm going to cut it to probably about, about there. This pattern can come off. We'll trim it to size and then we'll check to see if it works for the other side as well. So now that we have it cut out, we're testing it on the same side again. This uh, would go right here at the top and should fold around and be matched up. And then this gets matched up to that. Okay, one of the important things, that you, we basically have a matchup mark here at this top corner, but I'm gonna put a mark from this panel to this panel, and we'll call this A and A these are matchup marks so that we know that we sew them together at that point so that we get the shape that we want. So we're using a four-way stretch vinyl, which can stretch around structures, but this is a hard structure. This is not foam. So we need to add seam allowance along this edge. Now I'm going to be using a half inch seam allowance, but I don't want to add a half inch seam allowance to both panels. Um, I'd like these panels to be slightly smaller, but I know that the, the structure is not going to give. So what I'm going to add to both these panels just on this edge is one quarter inch for seam allowance. So I'm going to mark both panels so I don't forget that I need to add one quarter inch. And then here at the top, there's not enough fabric to stretch around. I mean, it's only an inch of fabric, so I'm going to put an arrow up here. This is a, a good practice to get into and say, add two inches just so that we have excess fabric here. Here we have plenty, so that's good, so I'm not going to put anything there. And at the bottom, let's check to see how much we have at the bottom. Oh yeah, I got plenty. In fact, what I want to do, since I have all this excess here, is I don't want to follow that. I'm going to follow this as my bottom edge. So I'll just put a few marks in here, indicating where I want to cut that. So I'm going to take this off now and see if we can use it on the opposite side, mirrored. So in this scenario, on the other side it was like this, I have to flip it, and we're gonna check to see if it's the same. Should be. Way to use my head as a third hand to stick it to that double-sided tape. <laughs> it is definitely the same. So here's my matchup mark. I'm going to put that matchup mark at this corner here as well and label it A. So we can use this twice. Now we can use those patterns to cut new vinyl. We're going to be using a four-way stretch vinyl called Eversoft. Okay, my vinyl fabric is upside down. The pattern is up right now. We need two patterns the same, so we're going to mirror uh, the second one off of this first one. 
Okay, notice here we needed a quarter inch on this edge, so I have a quarter inch on this edge only. Here, this is just excess fabric. It's not quite on here, but there'll be plenty here, plenty here. So now we have one, and now we need to mirror the other one, which means that it goes, this is the wrong side facing up, right side facing down. That means this one should face like that on top of it. So, so now we just uh, cut this one out. right on the edge. So our pattern materials on top of here, remember this A, it's basically a, where we want to join the panels together. I'm not going to mark it because it's basically at this juncture. We know that this corner is A, so I don't think we have to worry about it. Okay, I've got the pattern material on top of my uh, vinyl fabric. The outside surface is facing down and notice my pattern. See it says quarter inch. I can read it better this way. It needs to face down. Okay, that's really important. We have to have this pattern facing the right direction. We need to add a quarter inch to this side. We're going to add two inches approximately to this side. This side's not crucial for patterning because it's just uh, going to be stapled down. This side's going to be stapled down as well. So, but this side is. So I'm going to cut following that same angle I'm a little bit more than a quarter inch, so I'm going to cut one more time. There we go. And then a quarter inch outside of here, following my pattern. On the other side, I'm going to do the same thing, quarter inch outside the pattern. So here's how the side panels lay on this front panel. The A was here. We didn't mark it because it's basically a corner. And don't cut this excess away. You may be tempted to, but obviously it's there for a reason because we patterned. That's one of the nice things about patterning. You don't question yourself. So what, where do we start sewing? Because we need this to match up. Well, that's pretty easy. Put your finger here and then pivot the panel. And what we'll do is we'll start sewing here. Then as we sew down here, we'll match up the edges once those are attached. Sew over to here, come down here, and then we'll sew down to here, matching, up, matching it up to that edge. So that's how we're going to do this. Sewing the two side pieces onto the front piece is next. I'm going to set my stitch length to about five millimeters. And we're going to match up this A matchup mark, which is basically the corner. So we know where we're going to start because everything's laying flat. We're going to start we're sewing right there, a half inch from the edge of the fabric, matching up sides as we go. I'm do some reversing here. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reinforce this stitch. So what I'm going to do is sew inside the flange a little bit just by lifting the presser foot and doing a little bit of reversing here because we're going to be pulling on this fabric pretty hard. So I'm going to sew a little bit, kind of like a sewing webbing. We might have to cut on that, but hey, if we don't have to, then it's reinforced well. And then I'll start sewing again. When I reach this corner, I'm going to stop about a half inch from the corner with my needle buried. So right about, I'm going to use my reverse lever to get it right where I want it, right there. So my needle's buried, I'm going to lift my presser foot and pull this assembly so I can sew this next side. There we go. Lower my presser foot and continue to sew. Okay, match up the sides as you go. There's shape in this, believe it or not. Now get it, when I get in the half inch location from that edge, I'm going to stop right there with my needle buried. I'm going to lift my foot and pivot. Actually, I'm not going to pivot this, this panel. I'm going to keep this panel straight. I'm going to pivot this panel. A slit could be made at that exact corner, not going deeper than the seam allowance of a half inch, which will help the fabric to splay apart. I did not do that, 
but that is a helpful tip that may be advantage to you. Okay. Now I'm going to lower my presser foot and make sure that there are no bumps in, in the, where I'm going to sew, and there are not, and I'm not pulling on the vinyl much because it's a four-way stretch. I don't want to pull it too much. When I get to ha the uh, 45 degree right here, about a half inch right there, I'm going to bury my needle, lift my foot. Now I'm going to cut a slit in this fabric at that uh, angle, basically, to allow it to come around that corner. So see how it comes around now? I'm going to make sure that there's no bumps in this where I'm going to sew by using my finger to smooth it out, lower my foot, and sew down this side. When I get to the bottom, I'm also going to do some reversing here and reinforce this edge by sewing inside the flange a little bit we're going to be pulling this on quite hard. And that side is done. Okay, now we're on the other side. Match up that corner. Boom. Hold your finger there. Match up this edge. This is where we're going to start sewing. Oh, we can't sew in that direction, so we have to flip this. I'm going to hold everything together. If it moves, which it did, I had to rematch it up again. So I'm sewing with the side panel on the bottom and the front panel on the top. It's just as easy. It may look hard, but it's not. So match up that corner, match up that edge, hold it together at that edge, and then sew a half inch just like we did before. Do a little bit of reversing. I'm going to reinforce this by sewing inside the flange a little bit. Then I'm going to sew, lift my foot and put back at the half inch position and sew down. When I come to the half inch location approximately, I'm going to use the reverse lever a little bit and bury my needle at a different spot right about there. And I'm going to pivot on that. needle and so in order for this to roll nicely I'm going to cut a slit going no deeper than my seam allowance which will allow this to basically turn and I'm going to pivot my assembly around so I can sew down this side Okay, make sure that my fabric's flat where I'm going to sew. That's about a half inch inside this edge. I'm going to make a slit again. Maybe. There we go. And this. Turn this around so it's straight, and then pull this around with my needle buried, lift my foot a little bit, start manipulating the fabric. I may have to work this out because it's a small area like that. Try not to stretch the vinyl as you do this. Work out bumps. There we go. Now I can lower my foot and sew down this side. I'm a little bit beyond a half inch, but it's not going to be a big deal. Now I'm at a half inch again. Do reversing inside the flange just to secure it well. Applying the vinyl cover to the base and stapling it in place is next. Okay, so we've got it done. We're gonna try our preliminary fit. We haven't tested it at all yet. Let's hope it works. Eversoft is a four-way indoor-outdoor vinyl that is available from Sayerite. Mm -hmm. It's what we sewed this entire project with. Yes, that's going to be perfect. I love it. And it'll be stapled down here. This will pull that in nice and tight. I'm going to try to get this corner matched. This is a little corner matched right up into the corner of our base. There's a tail in there, so I'm going to try to get that tail 
to tuck in the same direction. It doesn't matter if it tucks here or tucks there. We just want it to basically be le going in one direction. Right now it's going over here. I think that's the spot to put it. So where do I put my first staple? Well, probably I don't want to do this edge because I want to hem this in. So I'm going to put it, probably put a preliminary staple towards the back here just to secure it. Okay, with this corner at the right spot, and I'm going to hold it, I'm going to put a staple. So now I'm going to let go of that corner and hope it stays there right at the back. I'm going to put two staples, not going too deep into the vinyl. In other words, not pushing too hard on my staple gun. Okay, so let's do the same thing over there. So I'm going to try to push my tail out that direction for me. Get it in the corner. That tail is our seam allowance. Where it's designed to set. There. There we go. That looks great. So I'm going to hold it here and then pull my fabric around so that it looks straight. Pull this off the edge of the table. There we go. And put a couple staples back here. Okay, now let's tip it up and concentrate on this part. Okay, so I've got this looking good. I'm gonna pull this down and we're gonna put a few staples in this trough area here with everything looking good. I'm using the long nose staple gun. Now I'm not gonna put a lot of pressure on the staple gun because you can blow right through the vinyl. But does this work with a short nose staple gun? It would indeed. In fact, let's just show you that it can work with this too. So even in tight spots like this, the short nose staple gun would work. Okay, so we've got two staples there. That's going to be able to be pulled through. See this bump right here? And it's fairly smooth looking here. That's because the tail is actually down here and over here. So to work that out, all you need to do is do this. And now look at that. The tail's now on this side. And the tail's over here. All I have to do is do this to push that tail around to this other side. Not, now look at that. So try to pay attention to where your tail is resting. There, the tail is down there. Now it's over here. So we get a lot, lot better looking side. So I'm going to pull this to find that trough. And I'm going to put a few staples in this. Now we haven't stapled here and we haven't stapled down here. We're just going to uh, attach some pressure here and put a few staples in the back here. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Okay, we want to try to get this wrinkle out, quite possible. We're just going to pull the vinyl this direction and put a few staples here. Now to create the corner here, this is on the underside, so you just want something a little pleasing. I'm going to try to make it a kind of a 45 degree like that. And I don't want to pull too hard up here. I don't want to pull these staples out or pull it through the vinyl. go. So here we haven't stapled up here, but we want to secure this edge. So again, don't push too hard with this. You don't want it to go through the vinyl. So for some reason when you do 90 degree turns like this, if you apply too much pressure, the staple may blow through the vinyl. Staples here. Pulling a little bit so we don't want it to be loose. We're using the Sayrite upholstery staple gun. The crown, the distance from here to here is a half inch, not the standard 3 8 inch. And that basically means that it doesn't uh, cut through the vinyl as much as other staplers do. So you should definitely get one. You can get a long nose, like I'm showing here, or a short nose. It both works for this. Now we'll just pull on this and secure it. We're going to finish this back edge, and I'm just going to roll it around 
like that. Nobody's really going to see this much. The back of this bench goes up against the uh, pontoon's railing, so actually no one will see this. We'll do the same thing over here. Here we're going to be cutting this out here to make this trough exposed. So I'm only going to put staples around the trough. This is where the backrest will rest on the base. The trough in the base allows for the backrest to breathe. There are vents at the bottom of the backrest and that trough allows for breathability so it doesn't stay saturated if it gets wet. Now here we could use Hydem Gimp or we could create a hem as we staple this side on. And I think I'm just going to create a hem. So I'm going to tuck the fabric under. I'm going to need a slit here. So now I'm going to fold the fabric and try to keep it consistent and apply some pressure as well inside that edge. So I'm not going to put a ton of staples in yet. I'm just going to do enough to hold it. So here's the edge of my uh, base here, here. I'm not going to cut in the middle of the, of the seam, but I'm going to cut on a 45 degree angle, almost up to it. And then I'm going to make um, little slits in the end, which helps it to keep from splitting. So basically a rooster's foot. I think I'll do it here too. I don't want to hurt the integrity of the stitches. That's why I don't cut on the stitches, though that does seem logical. That helps it, uh, if there's stress on the vinyl, it doesn't want to rip just in one spot. So now I can finish this. Okay, we have an obstacle here. I want to create a hem here. So I'm going to trim right next to that obstacle. Not going too deep. So we still have to create a hem and on this side. Now when you create this hem, you definitely want to pull fairly taut here because we already have the bottom secured. This side's tight. We want to make sure this front side's tight too. So you might want to get a second helper for this. So again, pull fairly taut as you create this hem. him this over. And if you do have too much fabric, just trim some of it off. You don't want that fabric to be rolled, you know, deeply into the top here. And I do have too much. Now we'll just continue to create that hem and staple it around the uh, perimeter on all sides. So I'm going to cut this little excess off without cutting really into my back stitching. Now I'll splay this out and use it to pull that corner well. So I like to leave a little tail like that. If you're concerned about how this looks, you could actually fold it under and then staple it in place. You still need those relief slits because this is a very shapely corner. There we go. Now we'll do the same thing on the other side. Okay, now that we're happy, we're going to go around and put the ex extra staples in so that staples are very close together, pulling the fabric as we do it. And we're going to also put a few in up here, being sure not to press too hard on the staple gun nose. Now just take your scissors and cut off the excess on the bottom side. Okay, there were vent holes here. I assume that this is the bottom of the uh, bench. I assume that if water collected, it might actually pool here. I don't think it would. But to be safe, I'm going to just cut. They had slid all the way down. I'm only going to do a little one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first reinforce the vinyl for the slit I'm going to make. I'm going to make it right about here. 
So I'm feeling for the slit and I'll put a few staples just to make sure the vinyl doesn't move at that juncture. And they actually cut a big hole. I'm gonna just make a slit. So right here. We'll do this in about uh, three locations across this uh, bottom lip. We will not show all of them. The there base for our pontoon seats is now complete. All we need to do is add the side arms that we reupholstered as well. We have a separate video if you'd like to see how we did that. Now to put the side armrest in place, it in back is even with the base. I like that. The materials list coming up next will show the exact amount of materials that we used to reupholster this base. Don't go away. The materials list and the tools list is coming up next. It is only through your loyal support that these free videos are made available. Thanks for your loyal support. And be sure to subscribe to the Sayerat YouTube channel. Click the bell to be notified of new videos when they become available. Thanks. We used a total of 3.6 yards of 54 inch wide four-way stretch vinyl called Eversoft. That would actually complete two bases because you can get two up along the running length. If you'd like to see how we made the seat cushion, the backrest, or the side arms, we have separate videos for those. Click on a link here if you'd like to see one of those tutorial videos. I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Sayerite, thanks for watching.